All right, guys, so today we are going to continue working on our Twitter clone project. Uh, last time we uh, worked on getting the database set up, um, set, setting up being able to insert uh, information into the database. Now we're going to work on retrieving information from the database. Um, my goal for today is to get the uh, sign-in working and um, working with Passport to get uh, to allow us to sign in. Um, Bcrypt, uh, we've already worked with Bcrypt to um, encrypt our passwords and um, working with uh, Session and Cookies to get our, um, <clears throat> our login process uh, working properly so um, that's what we're gonna be working on today so let's jump right into it now our first step is to uh, require all of our dependencies so I've already uh, installed um, passport passport local those are the two that we'll need for um, logging in locally um, I've also installed uh, of course I got bcrypt um, I've got Express Session, which is used for um, the session, um, uh, allowing us to keep lo uh, users logged in even when they leave the site. Um, and uh, I've also got Connect Flash, which will allow us to flash uh, messages, such as if uh, someone were to enter an incorrect email or a uh, password or something along those lines just a f message to uh, inform users of what um, what went wrong if something went wrong or you know success messages or whatever we really uh, need to do that do with that so um, we are going to go ahead and um, uh, we're going to bring in passport. Passport is equal to require. Nope. Require passport. All right. Um, we are also going to uh, we're going to require session. Require express session and um, we are also going to const local local strategy is equal to um, require passport local and we just want the strategy out of there all right so um, next we are let's see we are going to <clears throat> we need to configure our First things first, we need to configure our session um, so that way uh, users can stay logged in. Um, so we are going to I'm create a uh, variable called options and set that equal to an object. Um, and now that object is going to contain all of the different options uh, for our um, session configuration information. So the first thing we need to do is uh, create a secret. All right. And um, <clears throat> normally you would want this to be something um, like a random generated string. That way it's secure. Uh, I will do that here later I will actually add that to our um, environment uh, our uh, .env file I'll add that information to our .env file later uh, with a random generated string but right now I'm just gonna name it secret um, it's not very secure probably shouldn't do that but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do that for now 
Um, the next option is we're going to need um, resave. Now resave, um, resave basically allows us to uh, is asking us if we want to resave um, information uh, if 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 information has not changed uh, should we resave it and we're going to set that to false and the third option is going to be save uninitialized how do I spell that uninitialized and we're going to set that to false as well all right um, now we're going to let's see we are going to um, app dot we're going to create a middleware and we'll go ahead and um, let's actually change this to session options that way it's a little bit more clear on what options are um, and we will come down here um, and we will do an app dot use session all right and we're going to pass in our session options all right because normally uh, normally this just takes in an object so saving the session options here it just breaks it up a little bit so that uh, it's it's a little bit more a little bit more clear on what exactly is being passed in um, next thing we're actually going to need uh, flash so we're going to uh, flash is equal to require express flash or actually I'm going to use connect flash Alright, and I think I have the connect flash. Yes, connect flash right here. Fantastic. Alright, so um, now we are also going to, right above that, we're going to do an app.use uh, flash, and we are just going to call that return function. Alright. Alright, so now that we've got uh, our flash, we've got our session. Um, we are now we've got our local strategy um, and we've got passport so next we're going to need to implement those uh, those two things so we are actually going to um, create a couple functions here um, first one is going to be uh, we're going to do passport dot use all right, and then this is uh, going to take in a strategy. So we're going to do new local strategy. All right, and this is going to take in uh, a couple options here. Um, the first option is going to be um, the first option is going to be uh, the username field. All right, and then. <clears throat> The username field is a little tricky because whoops. Username field is a little tricky because uh, we are using both email and phone, so um, we are going to need. Let's see. Let's see. So uh, let's let, let's let's check this out. So um, this is just a regular object. So uh, what we're gonna need to do is, I think we can, I think we can check if one or the other is correct. So uh, we should only have one. Um, so let's check uh, JavaScript. Um, multiple um,
multiple um, multiple keys multiple key names same pair value so let's check this out Okay, I don't think that's what I'm looking for. I think I can do this. Um, so we can do uh, email or phone. And essentially that will um, essentially that will check to see if one or the other are correct. Um, so that should... That should that should work, um, and then we're gonna pass in here a uh, verify function, um, which basically basically checks to make sure that the user is um, authenticated. So we're gonna pass in a function called authenticate uh, user. All right. So now that we've got that started, looks like we're getting an error. Um, yes, authenticate users not defined. So we are going to do, um, we're actually going to create a function called uh, initialize. And in fact, Yeah, let's let's do this. We're gonna do. Um, no, I, I lied. We're going to create a function called authenticate user. Um, now this authenticate user is going to take in a couple parameters. Um, first one being is going to be the uh, email. Um, then we are going to pass in phone um, password and we're going to pass in done all right so um, we are going to um, let's see Okay, so we are going to, uh, I think this right here, if I remember right, um, let's go over here, passport, JS, um, local strategy, all right, and we're going to go here. Now, I think this just... Uh, requires a true false value so um, let's see so we got the new local strategy um, we got the options that are passed in first um, and then the callback function um, we're first checking for a user. If there's an error, it's going to return done with an error. Um, if there's no user, um, then we're going to return done um, with null and false, basically meaning that um, there was no user found. Um, if there's no let's see if no user dot verify pa user dot verify password um, passing in the password I'm assuming that's just a 
Hmm. Okay. And then it's going to return done, uh, null, and false. Basically meaning there was no user. Uh, there was no... there. The user is not authenticated. Um, otherwise, we're going to return done um, null, which is what is the first null value? Um, I don't know. I don't know what the first null value is. So let's let's see. Let's see. Passport JS local strategy done. Uh, function. What is done callback function in passport strategy? Um, When the official doc shows this local strategy using a middleware in the route handler, there is no need to pass the function parameter to the done callback. Done is a method called internally by the strategy implementation. Then it navigates you as you can see to one of the success error fail methods again by the implementation there are more options each of these options may may call to the next where snippet when success is called it, uh, it can attach the user to the uh, request or do other things depending on your needs okay it looks like for the options you pass passport to authenticate. If you want to determine when next will be called, uh, custom callback. Read the source. So let's read the source. Okay. Is it? I'm assuming this is the. Okay, let's see here. So, the local strategy conductor ta uh, constructor takes a function as an argument. This function is known as a verify function, and is commonly it is a common pattern in many strategies. When authenticating a request, a strategy parses the credential contained in the request. A verify function is then called, uh, which is responsible for determining the user to which the credential belongs. This allows data access to be delegated to the application. Okay. Um, a verify function yields uh, uh, under one of three conditions success failure or an error if the verify function finds uh, a user to which the credential the credential belongs the and the credential is valid it calls the callback with the authenticating user okay that doesn't explain why what the null value is I understand that the second value is the uh, user so if it's if you pass in a user like the user credentials so if you pass in a user um, it returns true and it has the user information held inside of it if it doesn't find a user um, then you return false but or the is the first one just an options thing um, let's see 
so <clears throat> configure the package Uh, if an error occurs such as the database not being available, the callback is called with an error. Oh, so, okay, so the first one is an error. Okay, so if we call just with an error, uh, with an error value in it, um, then it just re it returns as an error but we pass in nulls to show that we don't have um an error of any kind okay i get it now okay i've used passport before but i've never actually looked super into it um like the actual internals of how it works so um so what it looks like we're going to have to do is um we are going to um, okay let's do this we're going to const uh, we're going to do use because we have a user by phone and we have a user by email so um, both of which can return a value. Um, so we need to check to see if the email is correct. If we, if we find an email that is correct. If we find a phone number that is correct. Okay, so, so we're going to do user by phone. Right? And we're going to set that equal to get user by phone, and we're going to pass in the phone. All right. That so now we'll call this function, and if it is true, so if if this function returns true, it found a phone, um, then we will authenticate the user by the phone. Um, if it is not true, um, it will return false, and we will check the email. So we'll do const user by email, and we will call get uh, user by email, and pass in the email. All right. Now. <clears throat> Now we need to um, check if user by phone, then we want to return. Um, so if we have a user by phone number, we want to return the done, passing in null because we have a user. Um, passing in done or calling done passing in null because we don't have an error um, and then we want to just pass in the user uh, by phone right that will um, that will return the user by phone now uh, if, if we don't it won't run that so if we have a user by email return done right null for no uh, no error um, and we're going to return user by email okay um, and then if neither of those are true so we don't have a user by email or by phone um, we can return done down here at the bottom because 
this will only run this this uh, this statement here will only run if both of these two if statements are false because we're returning in each one of them so this will never get a chance to run except for if we don't have a user by phone or email so we're gonna uh, return done we're gonna pass the null because there is no error um, and we're going to uh, pass in false and then we can actually pass in some options here and we can uh, I think so at least wait so if we pass in let's see so if we call done we're going to pass in null for no error we're gonna pass in false for no user and we're actually going to pass in um, a message and we can use uh, no user with that no user or we can just do a message of uh, email or phone not valid alright and that'll be our message that is stored in that done, done function which we can then um, which we can then call um, we can then call um, the flash like it'll it'll save that message and whenever if if we run into that issue we can check on the with EJS we can check to see if there's a message uh, we can pass that message in and if there is a message then we can um, we can flash that message uh, so the user knows that there is no email or phone that is valid alright we'll save that alright it looks like we're all good we don't have any crashes so so now that we have that set up we need to start working on these uh, two functions here um, probably gonna take a little bit of trial and error but uh, we'll get it working we'll get it working so first we need to create the function get user by phone and we want to take in the phone number um, now let's see let's see we want to get the how are we going to get the email and phone? So, let's see. <clears throat> Actually, we haven't even um, worked on... So, authenticate user... We've got that. Um, so when we sign in, um, <clears throat> we don't need a get, we need a post here because everything is available through the front end on yeah so we need a post request here um, and I'm actually going to yeah we're going to app dot post we're going to do this do something else here um, so we're actually going to do a slash git uh, 
user. All right, and this is going to be um, this is going to be a post request that is um, sent from the front end because if we look, if we go over to twitter.com. And if we log in, if we go, if we go to log in, um, what is going to happen is it's going to send. It, it's asking for your phone, email, or username, which we haven't got to the username part yet. But um, whenever it asks for a phone, email, or username, um, it's going to take that value. It's going to take that value and it's going to send it off to a server and it's going to um, check look to see if there is a valid user with that email that phone or that username um, and if there is it's going to return a good like a good value basically say uh, from that request saying that um, you're good to proceed with the with the password. Um, so if I type in that, which is my my handle, it's going to go ahead and say, "Okay, found that user in the database. Now enter your password." But if I go and Sorry, we could not find your account. So if I type in something that doesn't exist, if I type in something that doesn't exist, sorry, we could not find your account. It's going to flash a little message down here saying, sorry, we could not find your account. So we will work on that um, next. So the first thing we want to do, actually, I'm going to save this here. Um, what are you yelling about? Unexpected token function. Uh, let's see. Uh, where are you complaining about this at? Um, it's probably up here. Yeah, right here. Okay, so it looks like we're good now. Um, it's just complaining about that because um, I hadn't completed that function. But anyway, um, we are going to jump over to the... Um, I really need to rename these so I know which is which. I think it's this one. Um, so, let's see. Okay, so we've got the we're going to open the sign up modal. Um, then we've got the modal close. Okay, so we've got first login page. Um, and yeah, this is part of the whole thing. Um, so we've got load login page. Then we've got unload login page. Okay, so where are we calling that at? On the modal close. And okay, so the only place we're calling that is on the modal close. Um, so let's see, where are we calling this at?
Okay, so when okay, so we're just we just need to add a separate function uh, or a method actually. Um, so instead of on the button click, um, we're gonna remove. Actually, I'm just going to comment that out for now. Um, so on the button click, I'm actually going to copy this down because I don't want to lose that. Um, so on the button click, we are actually going to um, call the sign in page script dot check uh, user. All right, and we'll create this function, and let's see. <clears throat> Actually, no. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 exactly right. Um, we need to check the user. Um because we're not loading the second page yet so we're going to create a method called uh, check user alright and then on this method we are going to send a um, post request to the back end to check to see if we have uh, a, a valid user so if we uh, want to do this um, we first need to let's see we need to get the value so uh, let's see so I want to get the value of second page sign in button sign in second page USN okay that's just that uh, username field username input right here okay so vars dot username input alright so we're gonna do um, we are going to uh, what do I want to do first I want to create a fetch request um, so trying to think how I wanna how I want to do this let's see let's see how we did it over here because I, I I know I did this I know I did this myself off cam um, on this side of things um, Okay, so we we need to create an async uh, function, um, and I'm just gonna copy this here. So we're gonna get a response. I need to create this uh, async function. Um, which will allow us to use the await. Um, we need to change this slash sign up to slash get. What is it? Slash uh, slash get user. Okay. Get user, and then it's gonna it's gonna be a post request. It's gonna be uh, JSON data. Um, and we need to get the data so we're going to say const data is equal to um, vars dot um, uh, what is it it's going to be vars dot username input dot value okay so let's actually um, console.log data all right so let's log that data um, if we refresh if we go to sign in all right and I hit the next button 
let's inspect I'm sure we've got some kind of error um, vars uh, oh okay let's do const vars is equal to login page script dot vars okay now let's refresh okay let's click the next button and we're going to inspect let's go to the console cannot read properties of undefined reading value um hmm okay So that is the data sign in next button. Data sign in username input. Okay, that should be correct. I'm just going to move this over here for a sec. So, yeah, that's the input. So let's. Let's see. Data sign in username input. Okay, that should that should be correct. So username input. Um so let's let's just do this real quick um, and refresh sign in hit next and okay so it's showing undefined why is it showing undefined I wonder hmm oh goodness so hmm a listener indicated an asynchronous response, but the message channel, okay. Um, See, I hmm. I'm not super sure on exactly why. Not super sure on exactly why it's coming back undefined. It shouldn't be coming back undefined. Let's see. Okay, I'm calling that properly. Um, let's just get rid of the async for a second and see if that changes anything. Uh, okay, so. Okay, so it's still coming back undefined. I don't understand why it would come back undefined. Um, Cause we're clicking the sign in next button. And <clears throat>
<laughs> so we've got the variables and we're setting data equal to the variables dot username input Let's see. Let's edit as HTML. Let's set the value equal to um, this and see if we get any. Let's see if we get anything after that. So we hit next and Okay, we're still getting an undefined value. So, hmm. understand why we're still getting an undefined value because hmm <laughs> let me think on this for a little bit and we'll see what we can come up with Okay, that was just a lack of understanding what a, exactly was going on there. So, basically, if I can find it again here, somewhere. Um, basically, what was going on, basically what's going on is, uh, whenever I, um, whenever I grab the variable from the, uh, vars, uh, object, it's initialized with another value and it's never uh, updated again. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing the username from the, I'm just selecting it again and saving the, saving the username um, field and then I'm saving the data as uh, from the field, uh, the value of that field. So now, if we save, we refresh, we hit sign in, all right, nothing there, we click next, and we get our value. And if we do it again, it should update like that. So, now that we're properly getting the username, um, we... Now that we're probably getting the username from the um, input field and we're saving it into data, um, we can now, whoops, we can now send our request. So we'll change that back to an async function. Um, we will save response and we will await the response. Um, from the post request going to slash get user and we don't need um, redirect because we're not going to be redirected anywhere um, <clears throat> so now let's send that request um, and let's console.log the uh, response all right, 
So now when I click the button, it's going, and I don't need the variables anymore. Um, it's going to, whenever I click the button, it's going to call this, uh, this function here or this method. And it's going to get the value or it's going to get the field. All right. Then it's going to get the value of that field and save it into data. We don't need to, we don't need to console log anymore. Um, then we're going to create a response and we're going to await the fetch request going to slash get user. Uh, the fetch request is going to be a post request. Um, the headers are going to be a content type of application slash JSON because um, the data is going to be a JSON, uh, JSON value. Um, so then we're going to we're setting the body we're going to stringify that data and uh, we're going to set the body as that data as a JSON stringified object so and then we're gonna once we get the response we're going to console log the response so let's see what happens here whoops that's not what I want so alright and looks like we get an error um, an unexpected token, unexpected token. Um, so I can't remember what the um, let's see here. I don't think it's it's I don't think it's actually an object. It's just text. So let's go back uh, let's go to Chrome and let's go to JSON or um, it's going to be um, JavaScript SC or JavaScript um, fetch API here we go okay we're gonna go to the docs here um, and let's see what type so we've got application slash JSON um, oh we can just send it as text plain text all right so let's do that. So it's just going to be text slash plain. Um, so let's just do that. Text slash plain. Um, and then I don't think I don't think we need to stringify it. I'm not totally sure. Let's save it and send the request and see if uh, see if it works so all it is right now is trial and error all right so I didn't get an error um, doesn't look like I got an error so let's we're, we're not get we're not getting a response because I haven't done anything on the back end yet so it's just an empty empty thing um, so let's console dot log and it should um, It should be on the request.body, I would think. I'm not a hundred percent sure. So maybe it's not. Uh <clears throat> hmm. Maybe we need to. Hmm. Let's see. Express JS uh, plain. Uh, send text plain. Here we go. Um,
response header has content. I'm trying to make my application return JSON as the content type whenever response is JSON, of course. Maybe we could just as easily um, let's do this um, actually let's just create an object call it user name and we'll set it, set it to uh, usn dot value alright and then we'll change this back to slash json and we will json dot stringify the data let's see if that works for us I don't know exactly if it will or not but okay so no it does not look like it properly did um, I should be parsing JSON yeah so we're, we're we are parsing the JSON that comes through um, so it doesn't look like it came through on the request body let's see what we did here Okay. Content type is application uh, JSON, and the body is being stringified. Um. Hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, so the method is a post. It, it is posting. Um, it's properly getting there. It's just not getting there the way we want it to get there um, so let's oh maybe it would help if I spelled application correctly it might help if I spelled uh, application correctly um, Okay, there we go. Now it's working properly. So we get the username, and the value is the value that I put in there. So if I send another request, so it should send the username as Joe. Okay, perfect. Now we're not getting a response because I'm not sending anything back. So um, let's see. Res dot. Um, So how do I have this set up? <clears throat> so I want to be able to check if um,
so I want to check if the response is okay so if um, if we find a value in the database if we find a value in the database I want the um, to send let's see let's go to express JS let's go here to the documentation all right and then so the response object res dot send status okay so that's probably what I'm I'm gonna want res dot send status all right and a good response status should be 200 if I'm remembering correctly If I'm remembering correctly response.body response.okay a boolean indicating whether the response was successful status in the range of 200 to 299 there we go um, response.status the status code of the response this will be 200 for a success okay so let's say res.send status if uh, we find something we'll send a 200 good status all right so let's refresh here all right and we should get a response uh, status we should get an okay true here status of 200 but if we get a response of 404 which I think is uh, not found if I remember correctly um, status 404 yep okay is false okay perfect so um, now we need to we need to get rid of this all right, and we're going to do const username is equal to um, requ request dot body, and that should be accessible dot user name. Okay, and then if we just console dot log user uh, username real quick. Um, we send and yeah, it sends that value. We change this to Joe. Yes, that works. Okay, so let's um, <clears throat> let's create a uh, query. So let's actually go here um, and create a query. So let's do a select. Um, star from users and we're going to create a where where username or uh, um, so let's see so we want to be able to put the username in um, into here whether that is the whether that is the um, phone number email or the username um, all three of them should be accessible here alright so what we want to do what we want to do is we want to select star from users from the users table where 
Um, uh, actually, I don't really want to do this in here. It probably would be easier if I just did it here. Um, so let's do db dot uh, query. All right, and then we'll paste that in. So actually going to replace this with these that way we can um, use string template literals um, so we're gonna select star from users where um, uh, phone I think Let's actually just do this real quick because I want to make sure this query is correct. So where uh, phone is equal to um, the string. All right, and let's run that query. Okay, so it looks like yeah, it looks like it properly pulled up, and those are the only two. Because um, if I run this, so if I change this to email, at email.com, and I run that, we should only get that one that doesn't have a phone number but it has an email perfect so um, let's uh, let's actually minimize this real quick I want to see uh, my SQL um, or statement my SQL or statement or condition um, I think they're the actual yeah so conditional condition one where condition one or condition two or condition three okay perfect so let's do that where um, where user or uh, where phone is equal to um, uh, this, if I can remember which key that is, um, username, <clears throat> or email, email is equal to username okay um, and then this I also need to need to call back all right so right yeah I need a call back there so we're going to um, check error uh, results and fields all right and this is our callback all right so we want to check if error if there's an error um, we want to return we don't want to just res dot send because um, it will continue executing if we just do a res dot send. We want to return uh, res uh, dot send um, send status. All right, and I believe if there's an error, that's most likely going to be a server error. Um, so actually, I should be able to just do res dot uh, send or res dot status. Um, 
and set the status to 500 and then add on a dot send um, okay the error right so if there's an error such as like the database is down or something like that um, we will send uh, the error we will send the status as 500 and the error um, back to the client um, that there was an issue so um, then we want to so as long as there's not an error we want to check um, let's actually just uh, console.log um, uh, results all right so that that should all be perfectly fine um, so now we should be able to send okay failed to fetch okay let's refresh Five hundred internal server error. Okay, so we've got we're getting a response of status five hundred, uh, redirected false and okay is false, um, and we got the post of. We've got we got the uh, the error message sent back to us. So I'm not sure exactly why we actually we, sh we actually shouldn't have got an error like that. Hmm, that's kind of strange. Hmm. So for for whatever reason we got an error on this side of things. Um because huh Why did we get an error? Select star from users where phone is equal to username or database should be connected properly. I didn't I never messed with it. Hmm. I wonder if it's because I'm connected through here. Um, this shouldn't be an issue, though. Yeah, we're still getting a...
Okay. It's kind of weird. Um, let's see. All right, let me play around with this, and I will uh, be right back. Okay, it just seems that I am an idiot. Um, seems to be a normal thing throughout here, but it's okay. We're learning. So, um, basically, I was typing in the name, and I'm searching for phone or email, not name. So, if I now type in... Um, a phone number, I get a result back. And I don't have a, I don't have a response. So let's see. Let's try an email. Okay, so... That's coming back undefined, and it shouldn't. Uh, let's save this here real quick. Oh, I'm getting all kinds of errors over here. Why am I getting errors? Error connection reset. Got it. Okay, we're getting the response, the error response. But we're not, we're okay, so we're getting a, we're getting a response if we type in the phone number. Um, let's see. Okay, make sure I didn't misspell anything. So, let's see. I don't okay now I don't understand why I'm getting this error because I do have a value in the database where email is equal to that so <clears throat> Yeah, okay. So I should not I should not be getting an error. Okay, so it's give it's giving us the results we're looking for. Cuz if I run this, oh. Oh, maybe that's it. Maybe it's just a maybe it's just a semicolon. That could possibly be the issue. Let's try that. Let's see if that fixes it. Uh, connection. Let's see. OK. 
Okay, still still a negative. Um hmm. Let's see again here. Let's refresh. Okay, so it is showing up undefined. Um Okay. So it works for the phone number. But it doesn't work for the email. That is strange. I don't get that like it should it should work perfectly fine for both the username and the email because it's working perfectly fine the the query is working perfectly fine here I can run the query here perfectly fine no issues um, and it will bring up all of the results that I'm expecting it to bring um, hmm <laughs> Let's do this. Uh, type of username. Okay, so it is a string. It still comes up undefined. What if what if I did this? It should not matter the order. Okay, so it has something to do with the email itself. Um, okay, let's let's console log username. All right, we can sign up. I wonder if it has something to do with Okay. Let's 
run that. Hmm. Let's run this script again here. So now if we query uh, this, I shouldn't get anything. Okay. So let's do this. Um. And let's use the email. Okay, so I'm leaving it kyland at email.com. Okay, so we got that working. Now we should have one value here which is this one okay now let's restart the server and we'll refresh the page email.com okay so it's still showing undefined I'm gonna have to take a minute and try to figure this out. Wish me luck. Alright, so it looks like it's just me being an idiot again. Um, typical. So, uh, basically what I had to do was, um, it was just JSON again. So I just had to stringify the, um, the request body username before I saved it into the username variable. Um... And it seems that it's working perfectly fine now. So if I save, if I refresh over here, and I do that, I get the result with that email in it. <clears throat> and I can do the same thing with the phone number. I get the phone number uh, the with the phone number okay so um, perfect so let's uncomment this again save that that should still work all right um It keeps saying type error. Fail to fetch. Huh. Oops. Everything seems to be working now. Okay. So, now that we are properly finding um, the username and the email, <clears throat> what we want to do now is... Um, <clears throat> what we want to do now is we want to... Uh, If there's not an error, there's not. If there's not an error, um, we want to. Uh, 
chat. We want to check. Um, let's do if results dot ID. So we're just checking to see if there's an ID. Um, and if there is, we want to return res dot send or res dot status um, 200 dot send uh, I don't know do I want to send the ID let's try it out so let's do a sign sign in again kyland at email dot com we click next and let's see over here <clears throat> okay um, let's just do a send status uh, 200 all right and let's refresh click next we're still not getting that console log why are we not getting that console dot log what is actually going on here So let's console.log results. Let's see if we get a results back. And it does not look like. Let's do this. Oh, okay, that's because it returns an array. Got it. Results uh, index zero dot ID. All right. Now let's see. Click next. Okay, now we're getting the ID. Perfect. So we can check now. And I don't even think that this check really even matters as long as we don't have an error. Um, actually, I think it kind of does. Results index 0 dot uh, ID again. All right, so if we have a results index 0 dot ID, uh, we want to res dot... Uh, send status of 200 okay so if we refresh and we do click next um, and we got a response fantastic so let's let's see if we can do res dot status dot send ID. <clears throat> All right. Let's refresh one more time. Okay. Let's click next. And ID is not defined. Oh, duh. Results index of zero. Whoops. Dot ID. Go. Now, if we refresh again one more time, let's try this one more time. Email.com. We click next. Uh, okay, apparently not one more time.
Okay, so express uh, res dot send status res dot send status instead. Okay. What? Let's do send status uh, 200 with the results index zero dot ID. Okay. Let's go one more time. Okay, perfect. So it looks like we did get we did get a response back and it does look like that it um it does look like status is okay. Perfect. So, next, now that we've got that figured out, um in all, in all honesty, I don't think I really need to send the send this back. It should work perfectly fine without it. Yeah. So we've got a response. Okay, it's true. Uh, status of 200. Fantastic. Okay. So, <clears throat> now, now that we're getting a proper response, we want to... attach a dot then um, once it is fulfilled um, we then want to callback function um, Uh, okay, so once it is fulfilled, um, we want to, um, if response dot okay, um, we then want to. What is it sign sign in page script dot uh, load second page right okay so if we refresh we click next and cannot access response before initialization. Wait, what? <clears throat> okay. Um Okay. Okay, so let's instead of tacking on the dot then, let's do this. So if response dot okay. If response dot okay. <clears throat> We want to um, sign in page script dot load second page. We we'll call that function. All right. We refresh. Perfect. There we go. 
And we didn't have any errors. Fantastic. That's awesome. <clears throat> okay. So now that we've got um, our uh, first part of the sign-in page complete, um, we need to now work on the second portion. Um, so when we do sign in or um, it looks like I'm getting an error. Uh, cannot read properties of undefined reading ID. Hmm. Well, let's uh, see if we can fix that. Let's do a console.log of the results. I thought I fixed this already, but I guess not. Um, uh, maybe, maybe we don't have That's why. Whoops. Let's do a restart. And now we've got it. Okay, perfect. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like it pulls every one up. And we will fix that. Uh, we will have to fix that in the, um, uh, in the, um, database. Um, we'll also do checks on the back end before we go to the database um, to make sure that the uh, email um, and everything that is entered, the email and the phone are all unique because um, right now we have uh, two with the same email um, so it's bringing back two results. Um, we will make sure that we uh, fix that before you know here here shortly but um, now that we've got the front end, uh, or the first part working uh, we now need to fix uh, work on the password part where we check to find that user in the um, in the uh, database um, and we need to compare the passwords to make sure they're they're both right so <clears throat> let's see so first thing we need to do is let's go actually go back over here um, I want to when uh, show login button so this is yeah I've, I've did I've done all this um, up here probably up here yeah so um, once we get the response and it's okay um, then we're gonna load the second page all right and then we're going to let's see is this saved as a value I wonder um, it is an input so it does look like let's do this let's uh let's do a console.log um let's actually select the this here so we will select the data sign in page 2 username document dot query selector and all right and we will select that and let's just console the log USN all right we'll inspect 
and we'll go to our console here. Looks like we've got quite a few errors. Fail to fetch. Check user, okay. Alright, so let's do this. Click next. Okay, and it looks like we did log that. So let's go back up here and let's actually log the value. All right, and we'll refresh, sign in. All right. And so yes, it is logging that value. Now, perfect. So we want to take the <clears throat> we want to take the username dot value. Um, so we're gonna save that username value um, in uh, let's actually let's see so unload first page load second page got the unload second page function here um, let's see do we have an event listener added to this it does not look like it okay so when we enter a password it doesn't look like it does anything okay so we need to add an event listener to that button um, so when it's clicked we send a fetch request to the back end um, we compare the passwords um, and we uh, as long as the passwords are the same um, then we will go ahead and redirect to the feed and we'll have to save the user um, in the session and everything like that so let's let's do that let's do um, let's see so this is the unload second page we need to l load the event listener so let's oops that's not what I want so let's inspect here um, data login button I wonder if we have that anywhere let's see so it does look like it's a variable um, we have the sign in button um, field which is which is the wrapper basically um, and then we've got the button itself which is just the login button so we want to grab this one right here so sign in button so we'll do a vars dot sign in button dot add event listener on the click uh, we are going to um, we are going to call um, let's do uh, what is it we can do a check PWD check password all right and we'll call that function um, and we're actually going to need to do uh, sign in let's do this sign in page script dot uh, check PWD all right and then we'll copy that um, and let's go down here let's see so we got the unload focuses 
Okay, so we'll just go down here. So we'll make this a method on our object. All right, and then what we need to do is first uh, select. So when that button is clicked, we're going to call that function. We need to first select the where did I put it at? Whoops. Uh, it's up here. Okay. So Okay. So we're going to cut that out. So one as once we get the response back um, okay from this page here um, as long as we get a good as long as we get a good response back from that uh, we will go ahead and um, load that page and that's all we need to do with that function now we are going to select this here and let's grab also grab whoops Oops. Let's also grab PWD docu document dot query selector, um, and we are going to grab the value in the input box here. So it's data password input. We'll copy that. All right, and we are going to let's console dot log. Uh, PWD and we will console.log.value. dot value. All right. So let's. Whoops. I do not want to view the page source. I want to inspect. Okay. So if we go over to the console, um, now if we refresh and we click sign in, we do. Alright, we click next and we will do um, login. Okay, perfect. So it looks like it logs out the email address and it logs out the uh, password. Alright, so let's get rid of those. All right, and then we need to create a um, fetch request to the back end. Um, so we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to do con. Uh, let's actually just copy it. It's a lot easier if we do it that way. That way I don't have to type it all out again. We're just going to copy from here to here. Go back down here. Oops. Oops. Paste that there. And we're going to make this an async, async function, so we can use the await. Um, now we want to ch change this to go to slash sign in. So we'll copy that, and we'll paste that in there. It's going to be a post request, um, and then the content type is going to be application slash JSON. All right, and then we will save the data. Um, so const uh, data is equal to an object all right and then let's see so okay so um, Username is going to be USN, all right, and password is going to be uh, PWD, all right. Let's save that, and now let's see if we can send. Um, let's see if we can console dot log request dot body. All right, and now we need to refresh over here. All right, we found the email. All right, 
and it looks like okay so that's so it looks like username and password are both empty um, let's see okay we don't want this we don't really need that at the moment okay so it's still showing that it's empty now okay what did I have to do I always forget how to do these things here so um oh we want to get the values from those that's right dot value and we are going to uh, dot value okay now let's uh, refresh again we'll type in our username again and our password and we'll do that there we go username kyland at email.com and password is kyland123 fantastic now we are properly logging our um, request.body now we should be able to requ uh, grab the request.body dot username and we should be able to grab the password as well so if we send that request again we're logging both of those uh, together alright so now that we are properly logging those um, the first thing we need to do is check uh, we need to find the the username again because the first the first port part um, this part is just to check to see if the username is in the database um, and we want to check to find it again just because uh, this could be altered uh, between this page and the other page and we don't want to rely on this one we want to rely on what's actually in that value field so we're going to um, we're going to set, uh, save the const usn is equal to request dot body dot user uh, name all right and we will change this to pwd password okay now we need to make a call to the database so let's do let's do this we'll copy this here all right we'll paste this here so we're going to select um, select star from users where email is equal to USN or phone is equal to USN alright and then once we once we get results back from that um, we are gonna want to um, once we get results back from that we're gonna uh, console log the results so actually I'm gonna remove this log up here um, and we should get the exact same results back um, as well so we're checking for email uh, is equal to username or the phone is equal to username um, so we should get the exact same results back as we got from this query so let's go ahead and uh, refresh all right whoops all right we click log in all right so it's showing undefined um, let's see so why would it be showing undefined let's um, so we're logging the results so the results are undefined I wonder I wonder why that would be let's uh, let's see hmm
Hmm. Okay. Um. Let's see. So we should. We don't want to send anything back. We don't want to do that. Um. Let's try it again. See if it was just a typo on my end. Click log in, and we're still getting undefined. Okay. Um. Hmm. See it. Sh oh, that's right. Da da da. Right there. Right there. There it is. There's my mistake again. Um. I'll never learn from my mistakes. Apparently. Seem starting to seem that way. I forget. JSON is kind of weird. Whoops, we're going to stringify that, and let's save that. Now let's refresh and try it one more time, see if we get uh, results back. All right, we click Next, and um, we click Login. All right, so it looks like we did get our results back. Fantastic, and I'm actually going to fix this. Um, fix this in our database now because it's kind of bugging me I'm not gonna lie um, phone number needs to be unique I Q U E unique and we're gonna do the same thing here um, date of birth does not need to be unique that does not need to be unique password does not need to be unique Name can actually be the same because we're not checking for anything. Many people have the same names. Um, okay, so let's run this and refill our database. Fantastic. And we're going to save that. Okay, so now we shouldn't have anything here. Perfect. So let's uh, refresh. We'll get a new user. Um, we're going to use email just because I'm just what I've been using. Email.com. And we will add a check before the database as well. Um, just to, uh, just to, just so that we're not relying solely on the database, making sure that it's unique. Um, so that, uh, when, see, cause, I want to I'd like to send a fetch request um, from whenever I click this button um, and check to see if that uh, if that username is unique or not and then um, if it's not uh, if we've already got that username in the database just Set, uh, send us back to this page here and you know little pop-up that says uh, username is not unique uh, or somebody already has that username um, so let's do this we'll, we'll fix that later though all right set our birthday next 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 verification code that'll come at some point sign up all right let's uh restart the server let's refresh our page here and let's add one more let's add a joe all right and we will do this next 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 verification for joe joe at one two three there we go Fantastic. Oh, it's not. Uh, we'll do Joe. Let's do Joe is awesome. All right. Joe is awesome. Now we can sign up with Joe. All right. And we'll refresh. Now, I in fact did not, uh, give me just one sec, I'm gonna fix that real quick. Okay, I forgot that I needed to um, know 
I needed to know the, uh, I'm getting to that point where I need to actually know what the password is. Um, and I, the first one I accidentally screwed up and just typed in random stuff for the password. So, uh, but I fixed it. I emptied the database and filled it up again. Um, and I added, uh, uh, I added uh, Kylan and Joe with the same email and the same phone number um, with the passwords uh, are the same. So, um, so now if we do, let's see. Okay, so back on track here. We are. We should be able to. email.com we click next all right we click log in we only have one user in that database now um, it's kind of bugging me a little bit um, okay so now we need one now that we've got the um, the user um, let's save uh, let's see. <clears throat> okay. So, we're going to check if results. I can actually just check if results because if we don't have any results, um, let's just confirm that because, you know, we're going to restart. And do a sign in. Let's do a Kyland at uh, Outlook.com. Let's do that. Okay, so that should actually catch that there. Um, hmm. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, we should be able to, we'll just do that up here just to make sure. Actually, no, we'll just, we'll just continue to do, uh, results index zero dot ID. Like zero dot ID, and we'll just continue to do that. Um, now we'll restart. I need to refresh this. I need to restart the server. Why? Where are you? Okay, there we go. Now we're good. Okay, so we sign in email.com. We click next and click log in we get our user perfect okay so as long as we get a results with an ID we need to first uh, save the we need to first save um, the user so we are going to um, say const user is equal to uh, results in, uh, index zero and let's just console.log that user for now alright and we will refresh we will sign in alright we'll click next and we our password and nothing should change except it's no longer no longer logs the inside of the array it just logs the uh, just that index in the array so um, now we should be able to access uh, user um, user dot um, <clears throat> we should be able to access user dot name right 
whoops, cancel. We click that button again, and it logs user dot name. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna comment that out for now. Save that. So it is logging the values saved within user. Okay. So now we need to. Um, we first need to check if. Let's see. We just need to check the password, in all honesty. Um, we've got the user. We just need to check the password now. So, if I remember right, it should be bcrypt.compare. All right. And then. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we should have, um, I think the first one, if I remember right, is the, um, the first one is the PWD, I think, the password that the users entered, and then the second one is the encrypted one, is what, what I'm reading here. Yeah, the data to be compared against. Okay, so it'd be user dot uh, password. Password. Okay. So let's actually do a console dot log. And it should return a true or false statement. Um, it should return a true or false statement. So if it if it is the same it should be true. If it is not the same, it should be false. Oh, that's right. It's a, uh, async, and we need to await this here. False. Okay, so it did return, it did return a false value. <clears throat> um, it shouldn't have returned a false value. It should have returned a true value, actually. Hmm. Yeah, it should have it should have returned a, a true because I have the same password uh, input in here. Um, let's see. So let's do this again. I'm just gonna wipe the database, and once we're done, we will create a new user. All right, our lovely phone number there, verification code. All right, so I'm gonna make the password that, Kyland123, and we hit sign up. All right, and if we restart the server, we refresh this page. Uh, actually, it's we should find our user. Click login, and it's still still coming back false. Um, I wonder. Um, let's see. It might have something to do with the way that we're storing the password. Um, Let's see. <clears throat> Let's 
let's go to bcrypt let's go to their page and let's see Let's do Hmm. So yeah, we um are passing in the plain text password, then the password that need the hashed password. Um hmm. I wonder if it has something to do with the amount of salt rounds. Um, hmm, that's kind of weird. It should, it should return true if I remember correctly. because we shouldn't have to save the salt in the database. Because it, it, it's the same, it's the same salt, um, I, I, I'm assuming at least. Let's see. Does it have something to do with the... Uh... Let's do this. Um... So await has no effect here, is what it's saying. So let's, we can get rid of this async. We don't need the async function anymore, apparently. So it should return the hashed password. <clears throat> I don't... Hmm. Hmm. Let's do, let's do this. All right. 
right. Await still has no effect. I thought we needed to await um, the hash. It sh we should need to await the hash because Okay, so we're back to doing this again because apparently I messed something up whenever I, whenever I did it. So let's see. Man, that's not gonna work. Wait, what? Password is not defined. Okay. Alright. What is data? Data dot password. Wait, let's let's wait a second. Um This should return the hash. Yeah, cuz it'll return it to the function function call here, I think. hashed password. Okay. So now if we refresh Back to this undefined. Uh, all right. I'm gonna see if I can figure this out. I'll be back. 
I have to say, I really like to make things a lot harder than they absolutely have to be. Um, <clears throat> so, basically, the gist of it is, I was not stringifying the password before I passed it into the hash. So, yeah, I... Ugh, I, don't, I don't even want to talk about it. Anyway, um, I spent the last hour trying to trying to figure this out. Basically, what um, I tried to I figured out it was uh, that I figured out that it was be, uh, needed to be stringified before it has passed in, but. I tried to stringify the request body and save it as data. Then I wasn't able to access the values up here and validate new user data. Um, I tried to um, <clears throat> stringify st stringify it after um, after I validated the uh, user information. I uh, was then unable to access um, all of these down here. Um, so what I ended up basically what uh, the easy way um, basically the way I should have done it in the first place is in the hash function I just passed in um, the I just passed in the data dot password um, I just passed in the data dot password into the JSON dot stringify that way I'm stringifying it before it's being hashed and then saving that result into hash password um, and then I'm stringifying that to be saved into the database um, <clears throat> so yeah it, it works perfectly fine now um, so if I type in the correct If I type in the correct password, I just created a user Tim. Tim is awesome is the password. I click log in. I get a true. And if I uh, if I in insert the incorrect password, lowercase t, I get a false. Um, and throughout this process, I figured out kind of how bcrypt works uh, a little bit on on the back end. Um, so the way I understand it, um, the reason we don't need to save the salt in the database is because the salt is actually saved in the, uh, in the, uh, string, uh, or the, um, the, the hashed string. So if you, if we want to break it down, um, to be here in the front is the version of, uh, bcrypt that we're using. The 10 here is the um, the number of salt rounds, and then um, this part right here before the dot um, is the salt. So um, that's what, and then after after this, it this is the hash. That's why we don't need to save the. Um, salt in the database because it's actually stored in the uh, the string itself um, along with the number of salt rounds and the version of bcrypt that we're using that way uh, and that's exactly why we have to use the uh, the bcrypt.compare method um, because it will automatically look for the version the number of rounds and the salt um, to come up with this string right here so that's how I got that fixed and I learned a little bit of something new um, haven't really used bcrypt all that much uh, as of yet but um, learning something new every day so um, we are now properly storing everything in um, the database and we are also able to uh, query the database to get the user um, check to make sure the user name is correct we then um, come down here as long as we get a result back um, we will save that in user and then we can compare um, the compare the password that's entered with the hashed password that is in the database um, 
now, um, let's see, we should be able to now, um, if we, let's see, let's take this, oops, and let's get rid of that, let's get rid of the console log statement here, all right, if we, because bcrypt returns true or false. So if uh, so, if we throw this into an if statement, um, if we throw this into an if statement, um, we can then check uh, once it comes back. If it is true, we can um, then we can set the uh, current user equal to um, equal to user dot ID right? and uh, we can res dot redirect to slash um, if it is not true we can just uh, we'll actually return this. Uh, otherwise, we will return. Uh, uh, we will set the current user equal to null, and we will return uh, return a res dot redirect to slash all right and so now if I refresh this here um, let's restart uh, let's sign in so if we uh, um, user Tim click next uh, that's right because Tim is Tim at Tim dot com there we go and need to restart the server for that to work and if we do Tim is awesome with a capital T we click log in apparently it's not going to work for me what a surprise let's refresh uh, restart the server let's try that one more time Tim at Tim.com. Click next. We type the password. Tim is awesome. We click log in. And apparently it's not going to uh, apparently it's not going to redirect me. Um, uh, let's Let's do this. Let's do res dot uh, render, um, and we're going to render the index underscore feed. All right. Now, if we save that and we click log in, it still doesn't work. What a surprise! Okay. Restart the server. We refresh. Let's try it one more time. Tim at Tim.com. Click next. Tim is awesome. We click log in. It's still not working. Whew. Okay. What? is the problem here let's see okay let's do this actually um, is match is equal to this, all right? And then if is match, 
then we'll do that. Otherwise, just put an else here. We'll do this. Refresh. Let's try it one more time. Tim at Tim.com. Click next. Tim is awesome. And it's still not working. <clears throat> then, of course, if I refresh, we've got a user. Okay. Why is it not working? I don't understand why it's not working. If I s sign in. I mean, I'm not getting any errors in any of the consoles. <clears throat> it's probably something on the front end. I'm almost 100% certain about that. It shouldn't be, though. I don't understand why... I have no problem accessing <clears throat> I have no problem accessing um, the Okay, we're logging is match is true. Um, Okay, so it is running this. Is it the return statement? No. Um, maybe it's because res.send 
res dot send status of two hundred. What? Cannot set headers after they are sent to the client. What headers is it trying to set? So let's do, let's do this. So we'll send the status of 200. We'll set, uh, set the return there. Um, we'll set the status as 200, uh, send the status of 200. Res dot send status um, this will be the 404 okay then we'll go over here and <clears throat> We'll say if response dot okay. Uh, actually, let's just console dot log the response. All right, we'll refresh. got a good response now if I type in the wrong password we get a bad response okay well that's a good thing that's a good thing So if we just do um, if response dot okay, we will do um, I. Let's just do this. If response uh, dot okay, um, await or since uh, we're working off of um, the current user status, um, if I just reload the page, reload page. Location dot re is it location dot reload? Okay. 
application dot reload. All right, that'll reload our page. Um, wait. So if we just do a location.reload, if the response is okay, oh that's right because I, okay, restart, refresh, we sign in. There we go. Okay, so it just we just force it to reload the page uh, as long as the password is okay. Um, and if it's not okay, we can signify that to the user in some way. Um, we can probably create a little pop-up message that says uh, incorrect password or something like that. Um, Okay, so let's make sure this works. We click log in. We get the green light to go ahead. And since this is still working off of the back end, it should be secure for the most part um, because the front end won't be able to interact with the back end except for unless you type in the correct password. So we should be okay with that. Um, and we re, uh, we reload. It still stays because the is user is still stored in memory. But if we restart the server, we reload. Um, that will have to be fi uh, that will have to do that with session. Um, and I was hoping to get to that this video, but I think I'm gonna wait till next video because um, this video is starting to drag on a lot. Um, and I'll hopefully we'll get to session um, next video and get that all properly set up and everything. Um, and uh, hopefully we can fix some of these random weird things next video. And then hopefully after that um, video is done and over with, um, once we have everything on the login page and everything fixed and working properly, um, we can then start working on the feed. So, but... Hopefully, um, hopefully we can get to that uh, after next video. So, until then, I'm going to call it a day. Um, thank you all for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, comment if uh, I could do anything better. Let me know. Um, I am still learning, so, you know, um, but... This has been a this is a great learning experience and I love doing it. Um, I just almost burnt my food that I was cooking a little bit ago because I was trying to figure it out. Um, so <laughs> hope you liked um, the video. Uh, make sure you like it, subscribe, and um, continue on this journey with me because I'm going to be a fantastic programmer and you know don't want to miss out so if you learned anything uh let me know if you learned anything because i sure learned something new um but until next time thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one